Today we're going to talk about the critical angle. So first of all, let's look at the following scenario. You've got a boundary line right there, and you've got a less dense medium at the top and a more dense medium at the bottom. So now you have a light ray going from more dense to a less dense medium and it will always uh, refract away from the normal. So this is our ascendant angle and this is our refracted angle refracting away from the normal. Now let's look at the second scenario, same medium, less dense, more dense. Now this light beam approaches this boundary at a bigger incident angle to such an extent that the refracted ray is parallel with the boundary. In other words, the angle of refraction is a right angle, a 90 degree angle. The moment that takes place, we call this angle of the incident angle, we call that the critical angle. So this is the first concept I want to introduce, the critical angle. At the critical angle, the angle of refraction will be 90 degrees. In other words, there's no light exiting this more dense medium. But there's also no light entering the medium except if there is reflection. There always is a little bit of reflection. So this is the first concept. The second concept I want to introduce is total internal reflection. So this is even at a greater angle, the angle of incendence, the incendent incend angle. Now, something called total internal reflection takes place. So this light ray does not exit the more dense medium. It stays within the medium and total internal reflection took place. And this takes place when this incident angle is greater than the critical angle. So just the formal definition for critical angle is the angle of incendence that provides an angle of refraction of 90 degrees and the refracted ray is parallel to the boundary between the two media. Okay, now to calculate this critical angle after we know now what it is, let's calculate it. So you still have a Snell's law that we're going to use which states N1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Now in this case we know the angle of the refracted angle, the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. So over here we can say sine 90 and on the left hand side, we still have the same that applies. So now the moment this happens, the 90 degree angle is there, this theta 1 becomes the critical angle. So to calculate this then means sine theta C equals N2 divided by N1 sine 90. Remember, this is an expression for sine theta c, so from there on you can calculate sine theta then by using the second function on your calculator. Let's do an example. Um, 
to calculate the critical angle. So light travels fr um, from perspex into air. And let's calculate the critical angle. So first of all, we know N1, which is for uh, the first specs will be 1.5 according to our data. N2 will be equal to 1, also according to our data. So then sine theta c is equal to N2 divided by N1 sine 90. And we all know that sine 90 is equal to 1. The sine theta c is equal to 1 divided by 1.5. Therefore, our critical angle for this boundary will be 41,81 degrees. I'd like to do a second example just to indicate that this does not only happen with air, it happens between any two media. Uh, so now again, what would be the critical angle if light travels from diamond to glass? Okay, so according to our data table, uh, the refractive index for diamond is 2.42. And this will be in 1 because it travels from diamond to glass. And the refractive index for glass is 1.52. Now let's apply a formula sine theta c equals n2 divided by n1 sine 90. Sine theta c equals 1.52 divided by 2.42 sine 90. We calculate this. We will get a critical angle of 38,91 degrees. And this is the critical angle for this scenario when light travels from diamond to glass. So this is not a fixed critical angle for diamond for any medium because it depends on the medium that it travels to as well. This then brings us to total internal reflection. And there's two requirements for this to take place. The one is that light has to travel from a more dense medium to a less dense medium. So this is the very first requirement for total internal reflection. And then the second, the angle of incendence must be greater than the critical angle of the medium involved. So very important, the angle of incendence must be greater than the critical angle of the medium involved. Now I'm going to prove to you that um, it has to, just mathematically speaking, it has to go from a more dense medium to a less dense medium. So let's look at this scenario from glass to diamond. So this is the equation that we're using. Two point four two divided by one point five two times one because sine ninety is one, and now we have a number greater than 1. one 1.592. And mathematically speaking, we all know if you're going to try and calculate this, it will just give you an error. So it will tell you that this is not applicable. And again, if you understand mathematics and graphs well, you will be able to understand this. That for a sine graph, 
it has a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. So for this value being bigger than 1, it tells you that it's not applicable, it won't, it's undefined, it won't be possible. So just to prove to you that total internal reflection has to be from a more dense medium to a less dense medium.